Well, I am so thrilled to be with you as we turn to God's Word for a few moments together. Whenever we open God's Word, we open up a world of possibility where we meet with God himself and he can speak directly to us, right into that place where no one else can go because the Word of God is living and active and God knows exactly what's going on in our world and he knows exactly how to speak to us and encourage us in these moments we have together. I want to speak under this title for a few moments. Jesus doesn't do boring. He just doesn't do boring. And so maybe you are looking at your life for the year ahead. Where's my life going? You know, many people use this point in the year for exactly that. They think about things, they plan and look ahead, and they consider many things about their life. I want to say to you, the life that Jesus Christ has for you is nothing but boring. It's exciting, it's enthralling, and it's an adventure. When we look at the Bible, the first time things are mentioned, they are often full with significance. And I want to highlight for us in these few moments we have together, the very first preached message that Jesus brought and the very first miracle that Jesus did. We find in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it's saying the following. It says this, From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So there is Jesus' first preach. That was what he was communicating. Repent means turn around, change direction. Why? For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God, they're interchangeable terms in the scriptures, means the government of God. And Jesus was saying, change the direction in which you are going in life because there's another government under which you can live. And the Bible tells us something about what that government looks like in our life. You know, the government you live under affects your life. That is the same for all of us in a natural sense, but it's the same in the spiritual sense. Under whose government you live your life, under whose lordship you live your life, really affects the outworking in your life. And Romans chapter 14 and verse 17 tells us this. It tells us something of the nature of the government of God. And it says the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Wow, who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want that kind of life at operation in our life? But the Bible says the outworking of that kind of life, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, is dependent on the government that is operating in your life. The good news is, Jesus said, that government is at hand. That government is near. It's accessible. It's, it's to be had. It's not complicated. It's not far off. And so maybe you're looking at your life this year saying, I need a change in my life. I need things to turn round and change. I want to say to you, Jesus said things can change when you reach out and let this government of God, this government of the kingdom of God into your life because it comes with those characteristics. It comes with the peace of God. It comes with the joy of God. It comes with the life that God intends for us. Change is possible through a change of government. All humans were made this way, 
to live under the government of someone else. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16, we read that the very first words spoken to a man was this, a command. It says, the Lord God commanded the man, saying. So all of us actually will find ourselves as created beings living under the government of someone else. We're made that way. The question is, under whose government are you living? Even in society at large, we know that, as we said a few moments ago, government affects life. And the question really for our society is not, should we legislate morality? But whose morality should we legislate? Can you imagine countries of our world deciding it's God's morality, it's God's ways, it's God's work, it's God's government that we want to see amongst us? What a difference that would make. Do I hear it? Do I hear an amen? And the Bible is a story, I would say to you, of two gardens. In the Garden of Eden, man decided to go his own way and said, not your will, God, but my will, our will. And everything went wrong. But in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done, Father. And everything changed because of that decision. You have a decision to make this year. You and I have decisions to make every day. But as you look ahead into this year, make this decision. I am going to live under the government of God. I'm going to let his life and ways loose in my life. And I'm going to live in the kind of life that Jesus has planned for me. And as we do that, we open up a life that is anything but boring, but is an amazing adventure. And I believe in the very first miracle that Jesus did, this in some ways, in a kind of pictorial, pictorial sense, a graphic sense, shows us these principles that I'm talking about. We find that in the book of John, chapter 2, and verse 1 to 10. I just want to go there for a few moments and read that story to us. It takes place at a wedding. And it says this, On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with us? My hour is not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were six stone water pots set there for the Jewish custom of purification, containing twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it to him. When the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Let's just go through that story. Because as I said, I do believe there are some things in here that Jesus was saying to us about what happens when the government of God gets loose in our life when we allow our lives to come under his government. The first thing I love here is something I would actually never teach or or preach or advise, and that is how we see here Jesus' mother ignoring him. She says, guys, they've run out of wine. Jesus, do something. And Jesus says, I'm not doing something. You know, my time hasn't come yet. Leave Leave me alone. And she completely ignored Jesus and said to the, 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 the um, waiters, do whatever he tells you to do. I don't advise that, but it's quite funny sometimes when I read that. I can't get 
that kind of picture out of my mind of the dynamics within Jesus and his mum going on here. But the first thing I want to draw out is this. The kingdom of God brings adventure. And that adventure began when they responded positively to exactly what Mary just said. Whatever he says to you, do it. Whatever he says to you, do it. Up until that moment, it was a pretty normal wedding. And we've all been at weddings, haven't we? We know how these things go. We have the ceremony, then we go from the place of the ceremony to the reception. And usually, if you've been at the kind of weddings I've been at, there's a lot of hanging around, particularly if it's good weather, because the photographer is taking the bride and groom off and saying, wow, we've got such great weather, we're going to take all these pictures, and the guests are thinking, man, I'm starving. <laughs> you know, we've all been there, and we're thinking, come on with the photographs, I'm hungry. And then when we eventually get in to sit down and we have the meal and then there's the, the speeches and there's the obligatory person who has to give a speech who's never used a microphone in their life. Yeah, you know the one that goes, <laughs> is this on? <laughs> and um, holds it then down at their belly and giving the uh, technician uh, nightmares as to how to make it all good. We've all been there. So we all know how kind of weddings go and then eventually the band come a little bit later or the DJ and we party the night away. This is a wedding. It's probably that's how it would have gone. And uh, maybe on the Monday morning at, uh, in the office, people who've been at the wedding uh, say to a colleague, the colleague says to them, so what were you doing at the weekend? And they say, oh, I was at this wedding. Oh, how was it? Well, you know, weddings, A, B, C, and it was a great time, but yeah, just a normal wedding. But can you imagine having been a guest at this wedding? And on the Monday morning, you're in your office and your colleague says to you, how was your weekend? I oh, was at a wedding. Oh, just a normal wedding. Well, actually, <laughs> no. This wedding turned into something quite incredible. What we were all expecting was this normal, humdrum wedding affair. But do you know what? Suddenly, a guy called Jesus told the servants to do this with these water pots and would you believe what happened? I mean, we, we actually run out of wine and we were all thinking that it's game over. We were all thinking it's going to be an early night, party over. But actually, these guys did what Jesus said to do and everything changed. The narrative of that report back to friends became anything but normal. Hey, we were at the best wedding we've ever been at. Some incredible things happened. And I want to say to you this. When you and I do whatever Jesus tells us to do, your life and my life will be anything but normal. An adventure opens up. Excitement and the joy and the thrill of the wow that Jesus alone can bring opens up. But it all hinged on them doing what Jesus said to do. It all hinged on the government of God being allowed to govern. The Lordship of Jesus being allowed to be exactly that, the Lordship and rule in our life. Question, what is Jesus saying to you to do? The truth is all of us are on a journey. And in some areas of our life, Jesus is ruling and reigning. But maybe in some other areas and in some other decisions, we are saying, oh, I'm not so sure, or la, 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 la. I want to say to you, change for the best in your life and an adventure in your life doesn't begin with New Year's resolutions. It begins with a decision to do whatever Jesus says to do in his written word, in his word that he's communicating to us. Everything will become an adventure. The kingdom of God is dynamic. And the German theologian Jürgen Moltmann said this, It is not that the church has a mission, but rather the mission of Christ creates its own church. And the mission of Christ, Jesus said, For this cause I've come into the world. He says, I'm a king of a kingdom, and it's for that cause I've come into the world. And so when you and I say yes to the kingdom of God, 
do whatever he says to do, we get caught up with the very mission of Christ. And that kingdom, the book of Daniel or Isaiah tells us, is growing is expanding, knows no end, will become the chief of the mountains, will become everything that Jesus has intended. And so when we in all areas of our life do what Jesus says to do, we allow the kingdom to pick us up and to take us on the very mission that Christ himself is on. The kingdom of God means adventure. The second thing I want to draw our attention to is this. The kingdom of God satisfies. In verse 7, the instruction that Jesus gave was fill the water pots with water. And it says, so they filled them up to the brim. See, that's in the character and nature of Jesus right there. Fill and fill full, totally and utterly fill and satisfy. And I think the fact that the Bible includes that they filled them up to the brim means there was this spilling over going on. I live just south of Munich in Germany and I've often been to the Oktoberfest, a world famous beer festival. And maybe you've been as well, or maybe you've seen pictures of that. And you will see uh, waitresses carrying big jugs of beer and the music playing and so on. And sometimes that beer is kind of spilling over. And that's the picture that comes to mind for me here of these big jugs being filled up to the brim. And the contents of it is spilling over. And now you know what I believe God is saying here? When Jesus gets involved, he fills to overflow. When Jesus gets involved, there is never lack. There is never a shortage. It's never that's enough and that's, that'll do you. It was always up to the brim and flowing over. And I believe Jesus is saying, this is what happens when I get involved. But it's up to you to allow me to get involved. In Ephesians 4 verse 9, it says, He who descended is himself, also he who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. Jesus knows no other way than to fill, fool, and to satisfy. See, sometimes we don't want to bring our lives under God's government and rule because we think somehow he will diminish our life. We will, it will be less than it could have been had we just taken control and done things our way. And so we sometimes think the very last thing that I want to do will be the very first thing that Jesus has for me. So I'll just kind of ignore any involvement of him there because I don't know, I think I can do this better because we have a false understanding of the nature of God. But the Bible says Jesus fills up and full and running over. You will never lose when you let God win. Let me say that again. We will never lose when we let God win. The story of your life could not be written better than the story that God will write about your life. Let him be the author and let him deeply satisfy and fill up as you decide to go and follow him in every area. In Matthew 5 and verse 6 it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. And that scripture is not talking about do things right and, you know, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really wanting to live right in terms of must try harder, must do better. But it's talking about those who hunger and thirst to do things God's ways, to honour God and to have him in first place as to, in the government of their lives. Those who have a deep desire to live that way and do so, they will be satisfied. And that life of the kingdom 
peace, the joy, the amazing things that God has for us come into play. God satisfies. And lastly, the kingdom of God brings change for the best. In verse 10 in this story, it says this, Every man serves the good wine first, and when the people have drunk freely, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus brought change at this event. And he brought change in the water into wine. But that change was into the best wine. When we allow God in, he goes beyond our expectation. Jesus didn't go bad wine, average wine, good wine. He went straight to the best wine. They had an expectation of how things go. But Jesus went way above and beyond their expectation. He, he changed the norm. He, he changed what everyone expected to happen. It was no longer just normal. It was no longer run of the mill. And I want to say to you, that's what Jesus wants to do in your life. He wants to change it in such a way that actually you could put a sign up that says God was here. Because this is so not just the norm, it's so different because God's been involved. And Jesus goes beyond our expectations and takes us to the best. But the other thing we note here is this. They had a natural time scale in mind. You know, first of all, this happens, and then that happens. First of all, the bad wine. Or sorry, first of all, the good wine. And then the bad wine. And um, this was their time scale. This is how things go. But Jesus even messed that up. He messed up the natural time scales of things. He messed up the expected time scales of things. And I want to say to you today, when you open your life up for King Jesus to do whatever he wants to do, he might have some different timescales in mind. In fact, when we read in the book of Acts, there's many moments of suddenly. You know, on the day of Pentecost, and suddenly there was a sign from heaven. And then the Apostle Paul, before he was the Apostle Paul, is on his way to Damascus, and it says, and suddenly... There was a light from heaven and suddenly he had this encounter with Jesus that changed his life. Peter is in a prison cell and the church are praying for him. And it says, and suddenly an angel appeared. You know, maybe you're t saying to people, hey, pray for me. I'm looking at this situation. Hey, pray, for, pray into this for me. Do you know what? As we pray into things, as we bring things to God, we open ourselves up to the timing of God. And some of those timings are suddenly. Jesus brings change, but for the very best. And we love that verse, don't we, where it talks about his ways are higher than our ways and not our ways. But sometimes when it starts touching our life, we're like, whoa. But if we can, throughout this year and beyond, just keep on doing what Jesus says to do. The narrative, the story of your life and my life will be an adventure that satisfies and is supernatural in nature. Is that not awesome? Is that not the kind of life we want to come into? Hey, maybe today you're watching and you are saying, I want my life to change. But Liam, you're speaking about a relationship with Jesus that I don't have. Well, I want to say to you, my friend, exactly where we started is for you today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's involvement in your life is near. It can be had. All you need to do is decide now. I want to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord of my life. I believe that he died for me and rose again and he lives today and I want him to be the king in my life. I want to follow him. And as soon as you decide that, Jesus says that brings him involved in your life. And it's just one decision away. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. And in that 
sincere, heartfelt decision, you open your life up to the kingdom of God to come in. And if you are saying, yes, that's what I want today, help me in that decision. We would love to help you. And we ask you to connect with us. On, one of the, on the platform you're wa watching on just now, there are connection possibilities, links that can be clicked, buttons that can be pressed, and ask for prayer. Or you can say, I want to connect with you. And as you do that, we from the team here will be able to connect with you and help you in that decision. Everything can be different when we decide to allow King Jesus into our life as King. And so I'm praying that every person watching, every person who is finding this word on one of these platforms, would this year decide in every area of life to allow Jesus to be King, to allow the government and kingdom of heaven loose. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. And I do pray that this year will be an adventure with God for you. God bless. Hey, Pastor Liam here. Thank you so much for having joined us for that word. I really hope that it blessed you and encouraged you. And you know what? If it did that for you, maybe it's going to do that for someone else as well. So why don't you share the link on social media, give it a like and get the word out. If you would like to sow financially into the ministry here in Europe, you can do so by scanning the QR code or hitting the link in the details below. Thank you so much. We would love to hear from you. So why don't you connect with us and contact us? And the details of how you can do that will be appearing on the screen shortly. We would really love to know who's listening and how it's helping you. Hey, God bless you. Stay in touch. Stay healthy. Stay well. Stay blessed. Praying for you. Bye-bye.